in this session on energy efficiency, you're going to be hearing again about a variety of technologies and, and approaches. And I think what's also really important is to think about how things really do work in systems that you many times cannot have sort of uh, one thing. It's, it's how you put things together that becomes very, very important in terms of optimizing the efficiency of your overall energy package, your, your facility. And so um, we will start off uh, in this session then hearing from Don Moore, who is the CEO of Harmonics Limited. And uh, you go first, and then we'll come back to Eric. Thank you, Carol. I feel like I've been moved up in the batting order uh, this morning. So enjoy <laughs> I don't get any extra time, though. I know <laughs> no. you. Uh, thank you all for being here. I'm Don Moore. I'm the um, uh, Chief Executive Officer for Harmonics Limited. Uh, we are speaking uh, to, to Carol's point of, of uh, uh, overall energy efficiency in, in these systems. We are uh, the industry leader, the power quality industry leader, uh, in the implementation of what is known in the industry as harmonic suppression technology. Uh, we consider this technology to be a actually an enabling technology for improving the energy efficiency and sustainability of government buildings uh, and private buildings as well. Uh, where uh, we implement our harmonic suppression systems uh, in the electrical distribution system of the building, uh, i.e. the electrical wiring of the building. Uh, we've been doing this in the private sector for over 10 years. We're based in uh, New Haven, Connecticut. We have uh, technology centers in, uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina and support services throughout the United States. Uh, we're the uh, technology leader because we have three patents on this technology, uh, the latest of which was uh, granted uh, last year. So we continue to move the, uh, uh, the technology, harmonic suppression technology forward. Um, we've been doing this for over 10 years in the private sector. We have 10,000 installations in place uh, with major clients throughout, uh, throughout the United States. We have applications in every key private sector. Uh, we're, in, we're working with the commercial real estate developers, we're in data centers, we're in the major colleges and universities and secondary schools throughout the United States. Uh, we're in most of the major financial services companies. Um, we're powering the data centers for a number of state governments as we speak. Uh, we're of course implemented throughout high tech industry, uh, hospitals, uh, and we power most of the major, um, uh, major media corporations throughout the United States. We're a small company, but we have major uh, st strategic manufacturing alliances with uh, major industry leaders so that we can support large deployments. We also have U.S. manufacturing capability. Um, our technology, of course, has been recognized throughout the green sustainability movement, uh, where our energy savings accomplishments are pretty well documented. We're, of course, a member of the Green Building Council. Uh, our technology has qualified for uh, lead points in the category of, um, uh, uh, of um, uh, innovative technology. So we also help institutions qualify for uh, green building status, etc. Uh, the problem that we solve is very well known in the industry. Uh, it turns out that the high-tech equipment in many buildings throughout the United States uh, generates a harmful, what is called in the industry, a harmonic current. And that harmonic current wastes energy in these facilities. Most of you know, obviously, the current uh, draw in a facility is, is what determines your power consumptions. So any time that you reduce the current in the building, whether you turn off the light switches or do other things like eliminate the harmonic current, which is what we do, you reduce the power consumption uh, of the building and you reduce it immediately. Uh, but this, this current in the building uh, can increase the power consumption by as much as 8% in a, in a facility like a hospital, which are very dense with high-tech equipment, obviously a data center or whatever. Uh, the impact of this current on the power consumption of a building and its elimination and the benefits you get from eliminating it can be, can be quite, uh, uh, quite compelling, we think. Uh, also, the, uh, this current reduces the capacity of the building so that it, it prevents you from putting more, more high-tech equipment in the building. Uh, it also causes uh, uh, heat in the transformers and in the distribution system of the building so that, so that you, you raise the building's uh, uh, operating, uh, uh, operating cost uh, overall. And obviously, it can have impact on the, um, 
electrical system uh, reliability and you, you can have uh, reliability problems, you can have system failures and, um, and those kinds of things. We have a unique solution to this problem. We address this at its source. In other words, we prevent the high-tech equipment from generating this third harmonic current. Uh, and uh, to, to the end, and we, we eliminate literally, literally 100% of it. Uh, our technology can be easily installed. It's installed in new construction along with the distribution system of the, of the building. We actually integrate it into the transformers of the building. Most importantly, uh, on a retrofit basis, our technology is compatible with the power distribution systems of existing buildings. So we can go in and retrofit an existing building to eliminate the third harmonic current and, and generate the, uh, the benefits and the savings that accrue to, to the elimination of the current. So as I said, um, we've, had, we've had installations where we've had uh, energy savings of up to 8%. Uh, and by the way, this is a sustaining operating uh, cost reduction. Because you know, unless anyone thinks the cost of power is going to go down over the years, once you once you eliminate this current, you solve this problem. You get the benefits over the over the life of the um, um, over the life of the system. Predicated upon what the cost of energy is in the building, and a, a good average is anywhere from 10 to 12 cents per kilowatt hour. But it ranges. It's, you know, we obviously have costs as low as three or four cents in some areas of the United States and, and as high as we've seen costs up around 18 to 20 cents in other areas. But the average return on investment of, of the implementation of our technology uh, on, the, on, the, uh, uh, on, the, on the quick side is, is 18 months and on the 30 and on the um, uh, and uh, in, in other parts of the country it could be as long as eight, it runs to 18 to 36 months. Um, of course our technology is is clean technology. It is absolutely passive technology, so that it requires no ongoing uh, uh, preventive maintenance. I used to say that I could install it, and then my engineer said we can't have Don running around doing this. But it is easily installed. It's it's installed in a matter of hours by a licensed electrician. So we feel that um, um, that that we feel uh, we we feel that we have a very very compelling technology here. We feel that we can make a difference in, in, we've made a difference in private industry already. We feel that we can make a difference uh, in, um, in government agencies, specifically in, uh, in existing buildings. Uh, and Carol's telling me I'm out of time, so if you'd like to learn more, uh, we are uh, an exhibitor uh, uh, in the room down the hall. We are B1, I think. We're in the, we're in the back wall. Thank you very much. How did, how did I do, Carol? Did I do okay? So make sure that you just go visit Don, visit all, all of these folks. Uh, it's a great chance to meet wonderful people and to learn a lot. So we're now going to hear from Eric Huffman, who is the daylight sales ma daylighting sales manager for Sun Optics. And unfortunately, he was having to scramble because his flight was late. So thank you. Yes, sir. Thanks, Carol. And thanks, Don, for stepping in there for me. Uh, it's been a very interesting morning for traveling. I don't have my jacket, my tie. I feel a lot out of place, so I apologize to uh, everyone else. But uh, uh, if you'll bear with me, we're going to talk about daylighting today, which it sounds like a real common thing. It's what we have coming through the windows. It's uh, what you see in a lot of the stores and warehouses today. But the, the main focus when we talk about daylighting with our company is eliminating the need for electric lights during the day. So that's how this ties in so well with the panel that we're talking about, the energy efficiency panel. Uh, we, we have our, our slogan is there's nothing more efficient than off. So when we do presentations and when we're talking to architects and designers, we'd say, you know, we talk about different lighting technologies and LEDs and all these great things that are being established and developed now, but there's nothing more efficient than if we can eliminate using electricity to power these lights. Even if they're old incandescent, there's nothing more efficient than a lamp that's off, even the most technologically advanced lamp. So when we can use daylighting or natural light, to eliminate the need for that electric light, that's where the energy savings is. So we, we've been doing this for a little while. Sun Optics is a 32-year-old company. Uh, we were actually just acquired by a company called Acuity Brands, which is the largest lighting manufacturer in the country. And our focus uh, developing with Acuity is tying together the, sun, the skylights, lighting controls, and electric lights to automatically create a system that will turn off those lamps when not necessary. So that's the beauty of the the system of working with a lighting manufacturer now or being part of a lighting manufacturing company and a controls company as well. 
So we're able to combine the systems in different projects to develop this technology and create a system that works for each building. So a typical project for us, a very common application for us is a Walmart, a super center. And what they typically do is they'll put in uh, what we call a, a effective skylight to floor ratio or about 5% of the roof area in skylights. And what that allows them to do is, is turn off or dim down uh, their electric lamps for about 2,800 hours per year. That equates to about eight hours a day, which is significant. Uh, they'll tell you on their own website that equals about $100,000 average across the country in energy savings from daylighting alone. So it adds up very quickly when you can turn off the electric lamps and use the daylighting instead. One of the key components to that is a lot of people, think, when they think about daylighting as well, you're going to get like, too much heat into the space. Or perhaps in the northern climates, too much heat out of the skylights. You'll have heat loss through the skylights. And there's a lot of myths that we deal with regarding daylighting, uh, along with the heat gain and heat loss. We talk about uh, you know, the thermal properties. We talk about fall protection. We talk about uh, leaks and roofs. You know, no one wants to put a skylight in because they're afraid it's going to leak. So we can address those things. We've designed a better skylight that eliminates those concerns. And so when we um, combine them with a control system to turn off the lamps, it equals great energy savings. Now, part of what we've worked with here on Capitol Hill is there's a direct use uh, renewable energy uh, bill that's uh, part now in the Senate that they're debating and uh, I believe it's actually being discussed today uh, and how we can use this technology and provide incentive for it. It's something that is not currently done. There's no federal or uh, many, there's very few states that offer any, any incentives for daylighting. It's one of those simple technologies that just kind of gets overlooked. Oh yeah, we can put skylights in, that's easy. But there's no incentive for it currently compared to uh, PV and some of the other technologies out there. So there would be some great opportunities and we'd see much more uh, reduction in energy efficiency, I'm sorry, much more improvement in energy efficiency across the country when we can provide some incentives as well uh, for this uh, direct use um, in, uh, legislation that's in there. So it's already passed through the House. I'm just checking my notes here. It is um, part of the DOD uh, authority that they're looking at using direct use renewable energy as part of their mandate to reduce energy consumption. So you can see if it works for Walmart, it works for any type of building uh, that's typically open space, uh, has wide open, um, you know, typically uh, without a drop ceiling, so warehouses, factories, hangars, you know, very large open spaces are where this is most effective and the return on investment is typically very quick. Uh, our typical, Don had mentioned some return on investments, our typical return on investment for new construction is in that 18 month to two year period on uh, retrofits, which a tremendous bulk of our business, especially in the past year, has been retrofits because the economy, there hasn't been a lot of new construction, uh, typically pushes out a little bit just because there's more uh, involved on the retrofit side. You got to come in, cut the hole in the roof, provide the structural uh, ma materials to support the, uh, the curb that's being installed. So on the retrofit side, it typically pushes out a little bit, three to five years. So those that are business owners in the crowd, a lot of people going to look for that two-year payback, very common uh, hurdle that we try and meet. meet. So when we combine that with the electric uh, controls and the efficiency of turning the electric lamps off, that's where we can generate the savings and get down to that lower payback period uh, to pay for the skylights. And I, I, in my example with Walmart, I don't think it finished, but uh, their typical store, they, they figure to save about $100,000 per year per store with the national average of about 10 cents a kilowatt hour. So depending on the, what they're paying for electricity, as Don mentioned, it, it makes that payback either stretch or reduce. So hopefully that gives you a quick synopsis of what daylighting can do in buildings. Now we can eliminate um, a lot of the energy through daylighting properly. We have a booth over here, and be happy to discuss it further with anyone that has questions. And we have a handout as well. Thank you. And we also know it makes a huge difference in schools where it is done. And so we're now going to turn to Bruce Salkin, who is the f a founding partner of Innovation, uh, to hear about LED lighting. Bruce? Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> my name is Bruce Salkin, and I am one of the founding partners of Innovation Lighting, which is a lighting company devoted to LED exclusively as lighting alternative. Um, Eric, first of all, I want to thank you. You really set me up um, by saying there's nothing more efficient than off. Actually, haven't heard that before, and 
And of course, you're right. But after off, <laughs> after off, the next most efficient thing in lighting is LED. So uh, I'm going to use that from now on. And, uh, I, hope you, I hope it's not a trademark. Um, LED is an amazingly efficient lighting technology. Um, I'm looking around at this room, and I don't know if that, uh, those lights are off intentionally. Um, Eric probably shut them off before he came. <laughs> um, you did, okay. Um, but uh, I don't know, you know, doing a quick calculation, uh, there's tons and tons of watts in this room alone that replacing each one of these incandescent lights with an LED light can save. Um, if every one of these is 60 watts or 75 watts, they can be replaced with 12 watts of LED. So if you do the multiplication, which I'm not very good at, um, and you then extend that out throughout the building and throughout the city and et cetera, the amount of wattage that can be saved and money is just absolutely um, astronomical. Uh, and LED is an evolving technology, and we anticipate the savings will continue to increase over the next number of years. So, Innovation is a company that's been in business for three years, and we focused on a particular niche in LED, which is replacing existing lights. Um, our, our first focus um, was in looking at fluorescent lights, which are the workhorse of almost all workspaces around uh, this country uh, in particular. Uh, every year, as a nation, we discard approximately 600 million four-foot fluorescent lights. Every one of them is 32 watts, so it's been using 32 watts for its, through its useful lifetime, and the LEDs that replace those consume 18 watts. That's 45% less energy use every minute of every day. Um, Sidebar, because we're talking about energy efficiency, but sustainability as well. Uh, one of the great benefits to LED in replacing fluorescence, and fluorescent is not the only type of light that LED can and should replace, but in replacing fluorescence, what we also accomplish is we put a light into use that has no mercury in it, and we take out of use a light bulb that has mercury in it. Now, oftentimes people say, well, yeah, but in fluorescence, it's just such a little trace amount of mercury. It really doesn't you know, mean much. Um, but of course, if you go to the EPA's website and look up what you're supposed to do if a fluorescent light breaks in your home, you'll really be freaked out when you see it says, first, get the pets out of the house. Um, so those trace amounts of mercury in and of themselves are no good. And if you multiply that out by 600 million lights uh, that get, uh, get discarded every year, and 600 million is only a fraction of the fluorescent lighting that is in place around this country, it all adds up. So um, Eric talked about return on investment and uh, in replacing uh, existing inefficient lighting with LEDs, Depending upon your usage, depending upon the, uh, the um, uh, energy rate uh, one is paying at a, in a particular location, uh, ROIs, uh, and depending upon the particular format of lighting being replaced, fluorescents, which are saving 45% against energy, uh, street lights, which save well more than that. If you replace uh, metal halide or HID street lights with LEDs, you're going to be saving about 80%. Uh, in terms of your wattage and your, uh, uh, and your costs, uh, your return on investments are going to run uh, as, as uh, little as a year's time and as long as three years' time, depending upon the particulars. Um, and uh, of course, they vary. The higher your energy rate is in Hawaii, your rate of return is going to be very, very quick. Um, so, uh, so let me take a little look at my notes because I, um, typically if you are a user or a potential user of uh, new energy efficient lighting, uh, one of the things you should be looking for from a supplier is validation of uh, the claims they're making about their lights. Um, they should be able to tell you they've been independently tested. Um, they should be able to tell you that they've been submitted to the DOE. Uh, for inclusion in the DOE's Lighting Facts program, which basically uh, validates that the independent testing was done um, uh, according to their requirements. Um, there is continuing 
um, innovation in the LED technology. Uh, in, in just in the last six months, one of the things that we've seen is certain formats in LED uh, which were developed over the last three years, but were, light, for example, lights that could get, get screwed into these um, uh, chandeliers here uh, would not have been dimmable, and within the last six months, that technology was added in at no additional cost to, to manufacturing the product. So now LEDs of this uh, type of replacement are fully dimmable, and again, we, we expect constant change. Um, so um, there are many, many different formats, as I said, and um, whether you're a uh, whether you're a, a, um, a member of um, the, the government or whether you're an independent business owner, um, there's a tremendous amount of uh, savings to be had through LED uh, in both energy uh, and money. So um, if you'd like to hear more, you can pop by and see us. Innovation at the show. Thank you. I think a lot of people really like LEDs and you're seeing them in so many different kinds of applications now and for so many local governments it makes such a difference if you're thinking about the relighting of parking garages it, it so increases brightness and uh, as well as obviously in terms of thinking about energy consumption and there are a lot of now street lighting programs um, going on across the country because people forget what a huge cost uh, electricity consumption for stoplights and for street lighting what it is uh, in every local government's budget every year. Uh, so now we're going to sort of shift in terms of thinking about energy efficiency um, a, a little bit in terms of an area that's very, very important that doesn't get nearly enough attention. And to talk about that a little bit is Thomas Horner, who is the VP, the Vice President of Engineering for uh, Water Management, Inc. Good morning. I first of all wanted to thank the Sustainable Energy Coalition and especially Ken Bosong and Scott Sklar for their continuous efforts in educating the Hill on the benefits of renewable energy and efficiency programs in the energy and water field. And a thank you to Carol Warner and EESI for their numerous years of educating Congress on clean energy and climate change while advancing innovative policy solutions. There are a lot of people that have been working tirelessly for years and we need to start listening a little more closely. The water industry encompasses water providers, sewer treatment plants, systems, numerous private sector companies. The American Water Works Association has their show here in town this week, a little over 25,000 people this year. And I think uh, George Hawkins, who's general manager at DC Water, said it best when at one of the sessions they asked him, how many jobs in the District of Columbia are you responsible for? And he stepped up to the microphone and he said, all of them. Without water, you can't run a society. Without water, you can't run an electrical generation system. The industry itself is very energy intensive. We pump, treat, repump, and distribute high quality, safe water through millions of miles of underground unseen piping. After this water is delivered and used, the product along with sewage and other byproducts, are pumped, treated, and repumped into our environment. Without the large expenditures from Congress throughout the years, we would not have the pristine environment that we have today. Approximately 16% of our nation's electrical supply is directly related to pumping and treatment of this essential resource. Up until about the mid-90s, 
the end users of this subsidized, indispensable service were charged relatively little. Architects and engineers are very smart people. They design systems to take advantage of this low-cost, high-quality product. Over the last 10 years, the costs associated with treating and distributing have skyrocketed. Currently, the national average rate is an outrageous one cent per gallon delivered to your door, 24 7, 365. That's an increase of about two times in the last 10 years. It's truly one of life's great bargains. New facilities that are designed to industry and water sense standards use approximately 40 to 50 percent less than that exact same facility designed 20 to 25 years ago. Proven off the shelf water efficiency products and engineered solutions that are used in new construction can be incorporated into our older facilities very cost effectively. Water efficiency programs save money for end users while greatly reducing the electrical load for water and sewer providers. We need to incorporate the fact that comprehensive water efficiency programs not only benefit the users of that service, but also benefit society by reducing the associated electrical load. Water authorities need to reduce their unaccounted for water, leak detection programs, repair programs, VFDs for their pumps. End users need to upgrade their facilities to current industry and water sense standard. The present day mantra of the water and wastewater industry is reduce, reuse, and recycle. The three R's will continue to decrease electrical usage tremendously. The industry, along with its clients, are slowly becoming more water and energy efficient. This trend will continue to endure as water and sewer expenses rise for non-upgraded facilities. The big picture. Water withdrawals for all purpose are slightly over 400 billion gallons per day. This includes water used in thermoelectric power production, that's half that total. Agriculture, 125 billion gallons. And 11% of the total, or 45 billion gallons a day, is distributed throughout those millions of miles of pumps on our private side. The commercial, industrial, and institutional sectors represent fertile grounds for the implementation of comprehensive water efficiency programs. And they will also reduce electrical demand and allow the water industry to more cost-effectively deliver its product. Thank you very much.